Okay, this video is to show you how to repair the buttons in uh, a lot of unit in phones. Um, today I'm going to show you these two here. It's the DECT 1480 and the TRU 9585. Um, the buttons are always the center buttons here that are affected mostly. Um, it's possible to have problems with the other buttons, but they're a different style. Um, the repair kit is for the center four-way joystick. And there's a few other models that this works in. Um, but today I'm going to show you these two because they show you two different uh, types of design. The first thing you do uh, is you're going to take this battery cover off and the battery out. I just wanted to show you this, this phone only has two screws and this one has four. So just take a look and see what you've got. Also, you want to keep track of these screws because uh, in some models there are longer ones holding the housing and there's one in or two inside. Um, they might be different sizes and you don't want to put in a, a long screw where you took a short screw out. Now, to get the phones apart, uh, you always start at the bottom where you took the screws out. It should start to come out and then there's clips. Um, on the sides. And usually, like this one's coming apart fairly easily. You just wiggle it around, maybe put some pressure. If you have any trouble, you can just go in where the clip is just a little bit to help. You don't need to gouge it and uh, damage the plastic. Um, you know, maybe you just slide it up there where it starts to get stuck and it's just a little bit to pop it out. And then there'll be a couple big clips up here that you wouldn't be able to pop out, but you can push the top, the bottom cover back and it'll pop out. Right, I'm going to take this one apart also. There's four screws in this one. Another thing I like to do too is, uh, you know, just use the uh, battery cover as a screw holder sometimes or different parts like the headset jack cover might come off if it has one. So as you're taking them out, just kind of look and go, yeah, they're all the same size, so you don't have to worry about that. Now again, I'm going to start pulling up on the back, kind of wiggle it back and forth. It's coming out pretty easily. Um, yeah. And then the last two at the end, you just kind of wiggle the, the back. Uh, yeah, do this a little bit and it popped right out. And this one has a headset jack cover, which would probably fall out. So I'm going to put that there. And then just take a look at the board. Um, there's always at least one screw. And I've seen two on different models. I'll oh, see. This one is, is a little shorter. Not much. It's hard to notice right away, but it is a little shorter. So just keep that in mind when you put it back together. This one has one screw. It looks like they're all the same size, but don't count on that because they could be a different version of the same phone. Okay. Now the materials you need are isopropyl alcohol. 91% uh, is the best, but if you only have 70, that's okay. I'd stay away from 50 because it's 50% water. I've got cotton balls and Q-tips and a small Phillips and a small flathead screwdriver. Once you get the phone apart, the circuit board comes up and the keypad will probably stick to it a little bit and just kind of push it down. And you can fold that over right like that. I'm doing two different styles here. So this one, this one came apart really easy. Now the two different styles here I wanted to show you is this one has got a big circle cut out of it and this one has four little circles. And this is the button that has problems. Um, the rest of them are all painted contacts on a, on a white plastic snap dome. These can have problems too from uh, abrasion, scraping off, but uh, not, not anywhere near as often. These buttons have problems, they're the rubber buttons. And the oil from the keypad itself builds up 
you don't never really have to take this out, but I'm just taking it out to show you. Oil seeps out of the rubber itself. And since there's a, a good amount of it here, and there's nowhere for it to go, it can all build up, kind of move around on this side a little bit, and build up here, and it gets coated with oil, plus the uh, conductive tips on these wear out. The conduct conductivity wears out on these. Um, so a little bit of oil, a little bit of wear out, and the button stop working. Um, so what you want to do is, these are pretty clean because they didn't need work, but a lot of times there's oily goop. You can take out just the white part, and it might be slimy with, with oil. You might see oil spots there, and, and um, it could get on the other side. It can work its way around. Um, on this white panel with the black dots, you want to be very careful of these. With a little bit of abrasion, you can rub that black part off and they won't work anymore. Um, but if it's if it's oily, you could clean it off. Maybe with a cute the uh, cotton ball, you could kind of just rub like this to get some of the oil off. It's not totally necessary, but it's a good idea. You could clean this off. Um, this one, you don't want to get rubbing alcohol on that because rubbing alcohol will take those black dots right off. But the rest of it, you know, is fine. You can like clean it off like this if you need to. Um, the circuit board also is, that's the most important part is you clean all, might as well clean all the contacts. It's, it's the buttons up here that are a problem. But if there's oil in there, just get it out um, while you're in there. This other one isn't dirty, so I don't need to show you that. But you got Q-tips. I mean, sometimes I use a toothbrush. In uh, rare cases, I'd actually take the rubber cape pad out and wash it under hot water under the sink, dry it off before putting it back. But these usually don't have that much of an issue. Okay. So now there's two different uh, keypads here. I'm going to start with this one. This one's the easiest one. You'll see the, the buttons that are having the problem are here, and they, they look different than the rest of them. And basically, the keypad repair has is two different parts. You've got the spacer and the conductor. The conductor has a clear, glossy coating on one side. That's an insulator and protector from the oil. And the other side is the conductive material. Uh, you've got the brown spacer. It's a clear spacer with a brown paper coating. And you can pick at it with a fingernail get one side off, it doesn't matter which one it is. Get one side off the paper. Now this one you see has four cross lines in the middle and you can see there's like lines right there and there. So basically you just kind of center it up. It's not perfect, but it's close. You can see the lines like just match right up with those center lines. Um, and this will end up over there. You can kind of, if you want to just double check. You know, that's how it'll end up. So it's pretty good. And then you can use uh, tweezers, or I, li I like to use a flat screwdriver to just kind of pick up that part. And then you've got this again. Now, remember, you've got a glossy side and a dull side. The dull side is the conductive side, glossy side is the protection from the oil. So you want the glossy side up, and you want to just put it down. It's a little bit smaller than the clear disc. So just sort of line it up so it covers all the buttons underneath. And that's it. When you put it back together, it'll go like that. And the new you're no longer using these conductive buttons that have probably worn out, and you're using these push down on these and solve the problem. So, slap this back on there. Put that in. Remember, if you've got a shorter screw, you want to pick that out now to put this back together. Make sure these charging contacts are in the right place. There's little spots for them. 
and then just start when you put it back together you start with the top kind of get that and the rest just make sure the wire is not pinched this wire could be sticking out here like this just make sure that's not going to do that and then snap it back together and you put the last two screws in this one did not have a headset jack so there's no worry about that here's the next one this one is a little harder to line up here because it's just very confusing when you're looking at this where exactly it's supposed to go it's not really clear however you've got this nice template right here you can see where it goes by the notches and then this is going to fit in there just perfectly and of course lined up straight not not crooked like that or anything it's straight up and down left and right um, you know, maybe this slides around a lot. You could even use a piece of tape or something to hold it in place while you're doing this, if you feel it's necessary. But I've I've done some so many of these; it's not really an issue. Um, okay, I'm picking off the top paper layer. Here's that. place yeah, this can come off again take off the top layer on the sticky pad and make sure you've got the glossy side up if you can see the light reflecting out that hopefully it's glossy dull I want the dull side down the glossy side up I'll try to center it on there you don't want to push on it you just want it to lay flat and you know it won't come off at that point okay so put that back on there this is the one that had one short one here and then remember the rubber headset jack kind of has a little like lip that just kind of tucks down in there and again make sure those are in the proper place they usually are and the wires don't get stuck on under, th on, under anything and start with the top of it should just line right up and that's it you put the four screws back in and test your buttons and the center joystick should work perfectly and you should never have trouble with it again because the oils can't get into the phone anymore thank you